in answering the question personally and in recommending for you, Jim, would you have an LVAD device implanted? If you were to ask me that, say, five years ago, I would have to say, no, I wouldn't. And that's because five years ago, when I had the opportunity to have an LVAD implanted, I did. I refused it. And basically, I refused it back then because... Hey folks, welcome to Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Merle and I'm asked questions all the time about the LVAD device or the left ventricular assist device. What is it? Would you recommend getting one? How long could one live on one? Questions like that. So that's why I wanted to pause for just a moment today and go ahead and discuss the topic with you and have you perhaps to better understand it because I've learned a lot just in researching this particular device. Now, basically an LVAD, a left ventricular assist device, can be a life-saving piece of little machinery placed inside of your body in your chest wall, which will move blood from the left ventricle of your heart around back into the aorta where it pumps the blood throughout your body. It is a huge change, a world changer in the transplant or the end stage uh, heart failure world as far as survival goes. And it works by taking that blood, running it through a pump from one cannula into the pump out to another and basically increasing the flow that's really what it boils down to therefore giving your heart a break if you will or at least allowing it to be uh, it to be replaced to an extent in its work and that can be a wonderful wonderful thing if that's what you need and basically a, a LVAD device is used for one of two reasons on the one hand it's used for that reason what's known as a bridge to transplant just the means to help to prolong and help you to survive in order to reach the goal of transplant which sometimes donor organs are not available soon enough and some unfortunately lose their lives waiting. So the LVAD gives you that bridge to make it to transplant. On the other side, it can be used as what's called a destination therapy. And by destination therapy, it basically means to give you an LVAD to help prolong your life until death should occur. And oftentimes it's used in destination therapy for people who are not good candidates for transplant or maybe people who refuse transplant, that sort of thing. And factors involved in that can be oftentimes your BMI, can be other organ failure, it can be age to an extent. I've already had a program about the age of transplant. Please go back and watch it. I'll link it up here because the face of the age transplants are changing a lot. But nonetheless, several different factors and a few more or calculate it into whether or not you might get destination therapy. But with that said, in answering the question personally and in recommending for you, Jim, would you have an LVAD device implanted? If you were to ask me that, say, five years ago, I would have to say, no, I wouldn't. And that's because five years ago, when I had the opportunity to have an LVAD implanted, I did. I refused it. And basically, I refused it back then because of the failure of the devices themselves. Now, granted, technology had already changed a bit but because of what had been going on with the older LVAD devices and all the statistics that were out then and the lack of experience with the new ones I decided I really didn't want to have to deal with an LVAD. Now, would I have taken one in desperation? Yeah, I would. I had already accepted that fact, but it's not something that I wanted. The failure of the devices were high. The surgeries were difficult. The potential of bleeding and clotting and infection was high. And that all had to do with the types of devices as well as where they were implanted. The modern LVAD device is put more up in your chest cavity right beneath your heart. It works well. The, the chances of clotting infection are much different different because the devices are much different. The older devices, however, were planted more into your gut or your abdomen area in a pocket that they made there, put inside of there, and all those things were higher, especially that device failure. And basically that came about because the older devices Pre the, the, pre the uh, HeartMate 1s and the HeartMate 1s were all pulsating devices, and they worked a lot like your heart, pulsing the blood throughout your body. And what would happen when that occurred is every time that device would have to pause to refill with blood like your heart does and then push that blood back out, there would be a potential for a stoppage of the blood flow on the one side and a huge potential for clotting. Now, that reason alone was enough that I didn't want to deal with it. And I already dealt with two small mini strokes that sort of thing you know just didn't want to have to deal with that so i refused it however let me be clear on this 
Things are so much different now. They replaced nearly all of those pulsating devices and started installing a few other models, but one of which includes the HeartMate 2. And the HeartMate 2 is a huge improvement over the first in that it's no longer a pulsing device, but now it is a continuous flow device. And it works kind of like a screw. I'll try to put one up here on the screen, but it works like a screw at this point that pushes the blood through your body at a continuous flow. So the inlet here brings it in from the aorta, it puts it in the pump, pumps it back out to your body in a continuous flow. And that helps in a tremendous way to prevent clotting because there's really no stoppage of the blood flow, no real changes, sudden changes, at least in pressure. Now, the devices are adjustable from three milliliters up to 10 milliliters. They're adjustable as far as their RPMs from eight to 10,000 RPMs. A lot of things are adjustable there, therefore adaptable and useful so for so many, but the clotting is not as much a factor because the device never stops. In addition to that, bleeding is not much of a factor anymore because of that continuous flow. Your heart's not being forced or any part of your body being forced to really accept that sudden pulse or that change in pressure, which I know is natural to our body, but that implanted device was not doing so well in supporting that. And again, because it was placed inside the chest cavity, less chance of bleeding too. There's a lot less moving mechanical parts and things to attach than what there used to be. So if I was offered an LVAN device based on that, yeah, I would probably be able to accept it now. And mainly because of these new devices, the survival rate at one year, and by the way, that's really all they measure. The survival rate at one year right now with the HeartMate 2s are running about 85%. And believe it or not, even though that's not 100, that's actually pretty, pretty good at 85% because you have to consider without that helpful device within you, you probably got much lesser chance surviving at one year if you're already in stage four or in stage heart failure. So the 85% is much better, but there are a few factors we need to consider and think about if we're going to accept that LVAD device. And one of them comes about in your time of work wait, believe it or not. Now, back, say, five, six years ago with the, the HeartMate 1s and even as the HeartMate 2s are currently in use now and a couple of other devices, right now as it stands, albeit things are changing, basically what you're given, if you're if they put a HeartMate within you, basically they give you a 30-day free card pass, if you will, to be on the transplant list listed as a status 1A. Now, that begins... <clears throat> excuse me, that begins and occurs basically when they consider you clinically uh, cleared or safe, you know, like the healing process has gone on long enough. And many people have varied opinions on that. They used to tell people it'd be three to six months before you're healed. Now they're giving people three or four weeks sometimes before they're considered healed. And they're then listed for that 30-day period. But here's the problem that comes in with that. As the technologies have increased, I shouldn't say a problem, it's actually a wonderful thing, but you could see it as a problem somewhat. But as the technology have increased, such as with a HeartMate 2 and the continual flow devices, um, they decided that one can survive much longer than they once expected on an LVAD. You see, you back up 10 years ago, again, they were looking to install an LVAD, hoping the device would even survive itself for one year after transplant, and therefore they would have to transplant you at the end of that one-year period. But now, with a much higher success rates in implantation, as well as a much lowered possibility of clotting, as well as um, bleeding and infection, they're finding much longer survival rates. People who are living years with a HeartMate 2 is installed and actually, for the most part, living completely normal lives. Now, completely normal as far as you can with the battery packs on your side all the time or plugged into an outlet in your home. I know... <clears throat> That can be difficult, but they're living completely normal lives. They're getting back to being active. Some are going back to work. Some are really, to an extent, a few I've even known who've been put at the bridge to transplant point, but then came back and told the doctors, you know what? I'm good with a heart, mate. You don't have to transplant me. I'll live out life like I am. And they did that by their own choice. So you can see the survival rate there is better. But here's what comes out of that on the other side. As you used to be listed after your healing process, uh, 
kind of took care of itself. As you used to be listed when you were clinically stable for 30 days at a status 1A, that's the top of the list. I've got programs discussing that I can link here too. But as you used to be listed for 30 days at status 1A, they're beginning to change their ideas on that because what they're beginning to decide, some doctors are now getting in meetings and, and, and writing papers and trying to discuss that because the LVAD is such a good option now to back off that time of transplant to be that longer bridge of transplant, they start to discuss actually listing people lower than that. What happens now, you're at status 1A for 30 days. If the doctors deem that you're kind of stable at that point, they might drop you back to the status 1B and send you home. And in doing that, once they do that, of course, you're lower on the list, therefore a lesser potential of being transplanted. They're actually considering making an LVAD patient in the future. And this has not happened yet. So don't quote me as this has happened. It has not happened yet. But they're considering placing LVAD patients after that same 30-day period down as a status two. Of course, you'll be at home for that most likely. You'll be enjoying life, hopefully. But they're considering placing them down to a status two, which in turn can actually extend or lengthen the time they have to survive in order to receive transplant, which can be done without the clotting, without the, the bleeding, without the infection can be done. Now, infection really comes down to the drive line itself, just that one line that comes out of your belly area versus all the mechanics that used to be a possibility or problem. So things are much different, but that's something you have to consider is that now and in the near future, if you're Put, if they put an LVAD device in you, you could very well be extending your wait time for transplant, not cutting it back. Used to, they throw an LVAD in somebody, put you as a status 1A, you were transplanted inside that first 30 days more than likely, and then there you go. You don't have to worry about it any longer. But a lot of people are living on LVAD for much longer time. And, of course, that just brings those bridges to transplant into looking a lot more like destination therapy because of the longer periods of time. So here's what I want to hear on the program today. One, what is your experience with an LVAD? Have you met with success? If so, was it from the HeartMate 1, the HeartMate 2, or some other device? And then two, answer the question, how long have you lived or did you live with your LVAD? Uh, I just would like to know about that because I do know that the time frames have gotten much better and so our possibilities are better so yeah today if i was asked jim would you take an lvad if you had to have it i'd probably take the lvad and enjoy some life while i waited for transplant because at the end of the day those who get transplant are the sickest patients those who have the less quality of life the least quality of life that's who gets transplanted hey that's fine with me but anyway hope this program has helped you out in some way if it has how about go ahead and give me one of these big thumbs up. Just pick whichever one you'd like. Give me a huge thumbs up. Maybe even considering if you're new to the program, sub subscribing to the program. Right here beneath the video, you can find the big subscribe button. Or maybe the little logo in the very bottom right, probably, yeah, right corner of the program. You can go ahead and click on that little guy right there. And that'll help take you straight to a subscribe place where you can hit the subscribe button. Maybe even the bell notification out beside that. Again, don't forget to comment below about your LVAD experiences. I'd love to hear from you, not only me, but the entire Transplant Helper community, which you are now a part of just by watching this video. Keep up what you're doing. Do everything you can to survive. And until next time, please, please stay stronger, friends.